Welcome everyone. Thank you for turning in. This is the African Book Festival 2022. With me here, I have Lindudu Malingani, curator of this year's festival. South Africa is the theme with yesterday, today, and what? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Welcome. How do you feel? Uh, second day today, so I'm feeling a little bit uh, ease. You know, I think people are here and uh, the panels have been going very well. So I'm quite happy. Uh, I'm content. I know from the day that you planned this panel months ago, you thought about it, and then your selection of the authors. You said at the beginning, it's sort of your dream list. How does it feel to have all these writers now at present? I feel like it's my party, really. So, I mean, I, I, the idea was to get authors that I really admire and whose work have changed, I guess, my way of thinking and, and, and writing. And so today, to have all of them here is, is amazing. You know, yeah. So you are also moderating some of the exciting panels. Let me know what happened today so far. Who had, did you have on stage? I, I spoke to Nozizo Cynthia Chele, who's a novelist from South Africa, who's got two books. Uh, Happiness is a four letter word, and the new one is called The Ones with Peppers. And so it was about adaptation from, from text to TV, because her first book became a movie. They did two movies out of it. So I was talking about you know the politics of adaptation and whether television gets it right or it gets it wrong, and what does that mean for the author who's upset at the poor movie they've made of their beautiful text. So that's what we're talking about. Later today at 5.30, I'm speaking to Emma Yuli Duma about his book, A Stranger's Pose, uh, which is a part travel book, but also in some ways like a complete beautiful book of essays and poetry. Um, and so that's, that's what I'm doing. So the mixture between obviously showcasing South Africa's beautiful literary landscape, you chose people that you admire, but you also have just like Emmanuel Iduma that you just mentioned, he's from Nigeria, for instance. How did you handpick those authors? I mean, so Emmanuel Iduma, I've known him since Crossing Borders, which is a project that he used to run in Nigeria, which part of the travels that he writes about in the book are from that project. So I've known him and I've interviewed him before and I've kind of had like a, I guess like a email exchanges and Instagram inboxes. So I guess in that way, you know, he fits there. But also I think, I mean, part of the people here, I guess for me is you have to think about the panel and who can work in that panel and then you kind of find people that can, can be in conversation, you know. Um, I mean, I met you after I was announced as the curator and we had like a really good discussion and you led some of the talks with the authors. And so then it was about, you know, we need to get you um, to host last night, which was wonderful, and to speak to some of the authors. So it's, it's, it's always nice to, to do that, to build relationships that you can, you can leverage, I guess, during the festival, yeah. So when you, when you say when you create such a thing and you have your dream list, your personal wish list, the next step is basically to find the panels where you meet the right, or where you try to, you are a matchmaker now. So now you're trying to True. match make <laughs> yes. the authors yes. together. Yes. How do you go about it? I mean, so I, I'm familiar with all of the authors here. So I, the idea was to then really try and get uh, conversations going. So you have an idea of who's coming and you know how they can all fit into the same conversation. But also I was interested in people's politics, so I know people a little bit, so I knew that they would either agree or disagree. Um, not disagree too much that they fight on stage, but disagree enough that the conversation is interesting. So then you have to like pair them in that way. Um, and also, I mean, we have, uh, I guess, an equal number of uh, women authors, and so then you kind of like make sure that there isn't a panel that's strictly male so that you know the voices of women writers and their views and global politics are also heard which is super important when you say um women writers female writers and voices your headliner you chose a headliner margaret, margaret busby the wonderful yeah. amazing woman that um achieved so much legacy so to say Absolutely. what how did you yeah what made you select her as the headliner? I'm a big fan of Margaret Busby and I've been a big fan for a long time. But I also think choosing someone like Margaret Busby for me is also choosing everyone she's inspired. So it's not just about her, but it's about the rest of the people that look up to her. So you're allowing them to 
have a conversation with her. You know, the person she was speaking to now, Atambile Masola, who's a doctor uh, from South Africa and a historian and a writer and a poet, is a big fan of Margaret Busby. So to have them in conversation is to almost kind of physically create this lineage that the festival is about. Lineage, that's a good point. When you say uh, Margaret Busby, who first had this, um, published this anthology, Daughters of Africa, and then New Daughters of Africa, and then basically inviting all the other female authors from South Africa, which are more or less the Daughters of Africa, yeah. where that, which are represented. Daughters Was that of Margaret Busby. Daughters exactly. Of Was that a strategic move in that sense, having a woman that represents in that way so many other female writers it's a very clever move was that something where you thought explicitly hey i would like to make an impact not only do i want to represent a female voice but somebody who did so much for the representation of female voices i mean it was both strategic but also you know i, I also think that the presence of women writers is, is also not a a strategic thing you know the same way that we think about male writers as kind of just existing and writing I think about women writers the same so I don't think that you know you have to be like we need women writers we must go find them out they exist in my reading list they exist in the people that I know and the people that you know I mean the first book that you were talking about last night is by Chimamanda so we can't say it's strategic in a way but it's kind of like it just exists in our everyday and I think um, when the choice came to invite people, I was, it was obvious that I needed to invite all these women writers that I admire, and so, yeah. Would you say that it's a generational thing, that for you, female writers are as normal as male writers? Or did you encounter also a time and place where you naturally, when books are rather selected or chosen for you, that they were rather male, and when the older you grew, the more selective you were with your books and more inclusive? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I, th I don't think I've always read women writers and, 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 and like you're saying, it's not a, uh, a thing that we are born into. I mean, we're born into this world where males are kind of, I guess, I don't know, seen to kind of do everything better than women, you know, which is Definitely a complete lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, where did you get that one from? I, I mean, I, I'm a village kid. I grew up in the villages <laughs> in South Africa, so, you know, the gender imbalances are quite prevalent. And so, and so, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, you grew up with those things. Right? But then you kind of realize that it makes no sense, right? There's no logic to it. And then you kind of, like, you know, you're going to read whatever you want, and, and that's what you do, really. Yeah. So you would say you are basically somebody who has liberated himself a bit from those kind of particularly stereotypes or from a very, um, let's say, male-dominated African literature scene previously? I mean, yes and no, right? Because I, 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 I don't know if I read nearly as many women readers read women writers, you know what I mean? So I still very much kind of operate within being a straight man. But I do make the effort to open my mind a little bit to hear what other women are reading. Because then you kind of, you know, if people are reading within something that they wake up every day being and wake up thinking about, then you, you definitely are going to get a lot more from that than you thinking that you need to make an effort to then read them. Um, another thing that is interesting, you create a festival, you have an idea, hopefully it goes well, hopefully a lot of people come. What are the kind of feedback that you have received so far about the festival? How do people feel? What do they say? Oh, great. They love it. Uh, they think, you know, last night's launch was really great. I mean, people had fun. People, people were very excited. You got them hyped up for some reason. You know, they were like <laughs> clapping and screaming, which was nice. You know, I thought, you know, my dream of a festival is always to have this kind of have the conversations but also have the excitement because books are exciting we should be excited right which you managed to do last night so I think people have been excited what are people telling you about the festival yes so far I had really good feedback as well people were saying that they like it they like um, the your next good read panel I think that's a very nice format to for people to to get reading recommendations from the authors because in as much as you read the authors that we invite that we have their books yes, of course yes. it's also interesting to see 
what touches them, what moves them, what do they read, what inspires them. And they have a beautiful way of describing what the books that they brought, that they recommend to, yes. So that was something I really loved about this format. And what else is it that they liked? People were excited to see who else is coming. They were excited about the individual guests that we have and see now what kind of topics they come up. So this is something as well. So you have your next panel soon as well. So are you looking forward to it? I'm excited. I mean, I, I, I so I'm, like I said, Emmanuel and I have been in conversation over years. And so today feels like a, a kind of a, a continuation of a conversation we've been having for a while but also a conversation that he's been having with photography and text in the same way that I've been engaging it's, it's going to be quite an interesting kind of synergy call if that's a word kind oh, of conversation maybe synergy, or maybe you're just gonna fight have a verbal literary exchange who I knows admire him, so I think I admire his writing and his photography and the way he thinks so I think I'm going into the talk very much as a fan of his work, and so I am. If anyone is expecting fight and blows, uh, you know, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's just going to be two people who admire photographs and text talking about it. Are you also going to take photographs of this festival, or is this something you left your camera at home altogether? I left my camera at home. I left all my cameras at home. I didn't bring a single one, so. I, uh, all right, so you're here my phone, fully. But I'm not making any photographs. Now. All right. Good, good, good. Thank you so much for taking time. Thank you for having you here and enjoy the rest of the festival. Thank you.